and welcome to the Friday message. I'm going to begin with a prayer that is in our service of morning prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. This second week of Lent is about the cross in our gospel reading from Mark chapter 8. A passage of this Sunday's gospel says, Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. That's contained in our Ashes to Alleluia Lent in a Bag book for this second week of Lent when we place the cross in our little prayer area, wherever that is in your home. We place the cross this Sunday. This is a lovely holding cross. The cross might seem like a strange symbol to have at the center of our faith, an instrument of torture and execution. Historians tell us that there were permanent racks that were present outside of towns and villages in the first century. And these racks are what people who were crucified were hung on so that everyone could see what happens to you when you challenge the power of Rome. But as early as the late 4th century, we find images of crosses in Christian art, mostly on urns that held the ashes of the early Christians. The cross was becoming a, a, an important symbol in our faith. And indeed, it is central to our faith. We follow the cross in our processions as followers of Jesus. We have a cross above the altar and a cross on the bell tower outside. This symbol of suffering and death has been transformed by Christ. It becomes a symbol of God's grace and love. A reminder that nothing is more powerful than God's love. Even death is not more powerful than love. No sin, no suffering, no sickness or challenge we face. Love wins. It's one of the things that the cross reminds us. Love wins. They could kill his body, but they couldn't kill the love. The love lived on. And it lives on in, in you and I, followers of Jesus when we heed the call to love God and to love our neighbor. And so I encourage you to use your Ashes to Alleluia booklet and to reflect on the questions for this second week of Lent when our focus is the cross. What are some of the crosses 
you have bared in your life? How has God helped you through those times of struggle and grief? What has helped you bear the cross of this pandemic? And then there's a nice reflection that follows on some of the meanings of the cross. Take some time and make some space to reflect on some of the crosses that you have carried and might still be carrying and also to reflect and acknowledge that this most important symbol of ours is a symbol of grace and love. The everlasting love of God in Christ Jesus. As Christ stretched out arms of love on the cross, so we reach forth our hands in love. That's what that prayer asks for. Hanging on to faith in God, no matter what. Faith that love wins, that nothing is more powerful than love. Just a few announcements. If you haven't had a chance to see the annual meeting video, it is posted on the website and I encourage you to take a look at that. The annual meeting video includes the year in pictures. It's a, uh, a wonderful uh, a wonderful video of uh, 2020 in pictures and with music. And then there is a video of the actual meeting itself. If you haven't had the chance to see those, check them out on the website. Just a reminder that we are uh, doing a music director search to replace our music director, Hank Glass, who will be retiring on Easter Sunday. Uh, the job description is on our website. If you know of anyone who is involved in church music, uh, someone that might be interested, someone that might know someone who might be interested, uh, please send that along to them and encourage them to uh, look at the job description and to send in an application. Our Christian Education Forum series continues this Wednesday with faith-filled education practices. We'll have Jonathan Dean, Gretchen Delman, and Luann Fortune, who will be reflecting on faith-filled education practices this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. The link can be found in the Friday brief. Our outreach drive continues in Lent. We continue to collect full-size personal hygiene items like shampoo and deodorant and diapers uh, for Pine Manor, Fish, and Mission Pinnell. You can drop those items off either at drive through Communion or in the buckets outside the doors or at the office. Vaccine appointments. Hang in there. If you haven't yet been able to make an appointment, uh, keep at it. Uh, more Appointments are being made available. This week, CVS started offering vaccine appointments, so there are more appointments coming online. Wendy has a team that is helping to schedule folks to make a vaccine appointment. If you'd like some help uh, with that, reach out to Wendy. It's important to know that Wendy doesn't have appointments for the vaccine. Wendy is coordinating people who are assisting with scheduling those appointments. So the appointments are scheduled through uh, Publix. There are people that are help, happy to help with that, but Wendy doesn't have actual appointments. She has volunteers who are helping others to schedule their appointment through Publix. So I just wanted to make that clear. Be safe and well, and God bless you. <laughs>